chapter nine of claude lightfoot or how the problem was solved by father francis finn this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nine in which claude spends two days in bed it was claude's wont to awake with the early birds spring from bed and begin the day in full flow of blithesomeness but on thursday morning he lay quite still with his eyes fixed wistfully on the golden eastern sky one day of imprisonment perhaps two days claude was appalled at the prospect may i come in dear whispered a soft voice outside come in kate i'm so glad you're up kate stooped to kiss claude and her fresh smiling face gave him comfort i got up early to keep you company claude you always do what's kindest and besides i have good news ah i thought there was something coming kit i could see it in your face what is it mamma has given me permission to stay away from school to nurse you oh kit and claude took her hand in so hearty a grasp that kate could not refrain from wincing shortly after the family breakfast mrs lightfoot entered my poor little cripple she cried as she caught claude in her arms you were tossing all night how did you know that mamma asked claude in wonderment he knew not the many hours of prayerful watches that had been passed beside his bed now kate said the mother ignoring her boy's question you might go to the college at once and tell father maynard of claude's condition tell him that we shall have claude up and about please god by saturday morning and ask him what we shall do during these two days i will stay with claude till you come back kate went off at once claude i spent a long time last night thinking about all you told me and the more i thought the more i was satisfied i'm so glad mamma it has taken a great weight off my mind dear i have always trembled for your fiery temper i know what a temper is and what it costs here mrs lightfoot sighed oh, but now claude i see that you are on the way to breaking it mind dear you haven't conquered it yet you may have trouble again on account of it but i am sure that with god's grace you will conquer and my first communion will be sure to help me don't you think so mamma undoubtedly and claude i hope that it will take a good deal of your giddiness out of you you are so reckless my dear and i often think that if it weren't for your angel guardian's special care you would have been killed or maimed long ago that's so sighed claude and i always like to pray to my angel because i know he's been a good friend of mine and st joseph has got me out of a heap of scrapes he's good to me too it's a fact mamma i am reckless but then you see i don't have time to think now yesterday if i'd had any sense i'd have waited for rob collins and frank elmwood to come up and i'd have got my bat without having my leg smashed mrs lightfoot was in better health than usual that morning and she contrived like the good mother that she was to interest her darling boy and to spur him on in his honest endeavours kate returned very shortly oh mamma she said you should have seen how concerned father maynard was about claude he said that claude needn't fret and that even if he couldn't come to the college on saturday it would be all right because claude is so well prepared already he told me that i should give claude a retreat in my own way added kate with a pleasant laugh and if by saturday claude were still unwell he promised to come up here and hear his confession that father maynard said mr lightfoot gravely who had entered the room after kate is an american he's a nice man i can tell you added claude mr lightfoot looked closely at his son how do you feel my boy first rate papa i don't like that lip of yours when my son makes his first communion i want him to look respectable 
you must get that lip down to its proper size and have your legs in good walking order or you'll have to stay at home next sunday claude grew very pale you needn't fear claude said kate i'll nurse you night and day if it's needful that's right kate said the father kindly and get him anything he wants don't spare anything i love my boy too much to see him make his communion in a discreditable condition mr lightfoot looked upon a boy's first communion as a public ceremony his early schooling and his later readings had led him to attach too much importance even in religious matters to externals perceiving claude's dismay he added a few kind words before setting out for his law office well said claude to his sister if i don't get well soon enough it serves me right why dear for my ugly conduct to mr grace kate it was awful when i turned my back on him i knew it was wrong and still i did it and claude sighed oh, this small boy had a delicate conscience he was thoughtless in the act but very thoughtful in the retrospect many a word spoken or deed performed in mere lightness of heart had come back to him at night in memories charged with remorse his preparation for communion had as is natural increased the delicacy of his conscience to such a degree indeed that he often saw sin where sin was not don't worry about that dear said kate in her soothing tones god knows your heart my brother and he is as quick to raise us as we are to fall and kate in her sweet winning way went on to speak of god's goodness and mercy bringing everything to bear upon the sacrament of his love what with conversation reading the doctor's visit and a few games of checkers the morning passed quickly and pleasantly in the afternoon messrs grace and russell called while kate entertained mr russell mr grace addressed himself to his pupil it's very kind of you to come to see me sir said claude gratefully not at all answered mr grace you mustn't think of that little scene we had claude i was surprised but it's all over and besides that said claude i'm such a nuisance to you in class but i'm doing my best sir and so am i claude sometimes i think that i'm too hard on some of you but i can't see clearly where i am too severe so my boy if it should happen that i should seem to be harsh with you you must think that i'm doing my best and whenever you annoy me i'll try to think you are doing your best is it a bargain and mr grace's smile was very kind and his eye very soft as he looked down into the face of the patient he was quite a different man when dealing with the sick and the suffering and claude now perceived for the first time that mr grace had a tender heart yes sir i agree i didn't think of it that way before but i warn you claude that my trying to think so may not be the same thing as my thinking so i never could understand why some boys should be so boisterous claude and mr grace spoke with each other very freely and before their conference had ended mr grace had said some very beautiful and very consoling things which set claude's soul into a warmer glow of desire for the coming sunday mr grace's best teaching was done outside classroom and playground the visitors left the children very happy indeed and the evening found the two entertaining rob and frank thanks to the kindness and love of so many claude's day which in the forecast had promised so ill turned out to be most happy frank before leaving his little friend handed him a package mr grace he said asked me to give you this i don't know what it is but i hope it may give you pleasure 
cod's eyes sparkled when he opened the packet and held up the picture of the little roman child tarsicius his hands clasped tightly and hugging to his bosom the christian mysteries while facing undauntedly the savage rabble that was about to take his life who happy child enjoyed the sublime privilege of carrying in his tiny hands him who was the life indeed claude said god bless mr grace in his night prayers and he put an amount of intensity into that little invocation as for the picture of tarsicius claude's hero he could hardly let it out of sight for a moment this was the first lively boy that mr grace had ever really won and in the winning tarsicius beautiful little saint entered into the conquered one's life the next day passed quietly at last saturday dawned and with the dawn's flush upon his happy face arose claude he joined the boys in retreat and in the afternoon made a general confession of his whole life then blithe and happy he left the college grounds to meet his heaviest cross so cruel a cross that i have scarcely the heart to enter into the particulars End of chapter nine